Hello all, welcome to another video on Learn, Share and Repeat. If it's your first time visiting, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notifications bell. That's going to help me more than you know and it's massively appreciated. Right, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into today's topic. We are going to do another video on the SC400 exam guide series today and we are moving into the realms of data loss prevention in Microsoft Purview, DL. P. It's going to be quite a big category with lots of subsections, so let's get started. Let's dive straight in. Okay, the next section in our study guide is Implement DLP. This is going to count for 15 to 20% of the SC400 exam, and we're going to start with this first subsection of creating and configuring DLP policies. This will include designing DLP policies based on organization's requirements, configure permissions for DLP, create and manage DLP policies, interpret policy and rule precedents in DLP, and configure a Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps file policy to use DLP policies. First, let's move over to this learn.microsoft.com article. It gives you a few things to get you started before you begin, if you're new to Purview DLP, some core articles here that are going to be of use to you in terms of how you incorporate administrative units into your DLP. So you can configure admin units, which are groups of uh, significant or specific people who will have access to particular alerts for uh, particular uh, DLP policies. Uh, I will link to a video I've done on admin units previously, so you can uh, check that out. Look out for that in the top right hand corner about now and you'll get uh, the card link to that. Uh, learn about purview data loss prevention. That's the article that we're in right now. Planning for DLP. It's important to identify the correct stakeholders. So if we take a look at that one, let's just quickly open that in a new tab. Uh, when you implement DLP policies uh, that can be applied across large portions of your organization, your IT department alone can't develop a broad ranging plan with out negative consequences. So you need to identify stakeholders who can uh, interpret the regulations and laws and industry standards that your organization is subject to, the categories of sensitive items to be protected, the business processes they're used in, the risky behavior that should be limited, prioritize which data should be protected first, based on the sensitivity of the items and risk involved, and outline the DLP policy match event review and remediation process. So in general, these personas here are the ones that are relevant uh, towards the DLP uh, defining process. Regulatory and compliance officers, chief risk officer, legal officers, security compliance officers, business owners for the data items, business units, and of course, IT. You need to be able to describe the categories of sensitive information to protect. We've covered sensitive info types in previous videos in this course, so you should be familiar with those now. Set goals and strategy. Let's take a look at what this is all about. So if we uh, can, can see here, once you've identified your stakeholders, know which sensitive information needs protection and where it's used, the stakeholders can set their protection goals and IT can develop an implementation plan. And this plan should include a map of your starting state, desired end state, and the steps to get from one to the other. And I'll not drain all of these bullet points. You can read those for yourself. I'll, I'll put all of these relevant links in so you can have a look. So um, let's just go through data policy prevention, policy reference, designing the policy, create and deploy the policies, learn about investigating data loss prevention alerts. Permissions, these are the permissions that you're going to need to create and deploy the policies. You will need to be a compliance admin, a compliance data administrator, or be a member of the information protection role groups, information protection admin groups, or the security administrator. Global admin, of course, can do this as well, but it's better to have one of these specific roles in order to do that. Right, let's get started and create a DLP policy. We need to be in compliance.microsoft.com. Uh, as an appropriate admin, uh, let's scroll down to DLP, data loss prevention, there it is. 
go into policies and you can see that I have a number of policies in here already and the study guide references the priority in which these are processed and it works from top down zero to in this case 13 is the the latest DLP policy that I have in place here you'll see that I have the name of the policy here, the priority as we've mentioned, the last modified date of the policy, and the status of the policy. Some are in simulation with notifications, uh, simulation without notifications, some are fully on, and you can have them just completely turned off as well. Um, this has changed definition since the last time I did a DLP video. You, uh, I'll put a link to that here right now, and you can see that this was previously labeled as test with notifications or test without notifications, and that would uh, result in policy tips being shown to the end users or, or not, depending on which one you selected. But let's quickly go through creating a policy. I'm going to try and keep this particular video quite short because I've done a DLP video before. As I said, I, I have linked to my original DLP video uh, in, this, uh, in the description of this one, so you can go back and have a, a full look at that one. Uh, this one will really be intended to be a, a refresher and update to some of the new terms and terminology that are in place now in DLP since I last filmed that one. So you can start with a template or create a custom policy. So we have these categories here that we can select to create our policy. Uh, for uh, this example, I will choose a financial one. I'll pick a particular regulation from a particular country. Uh, you can filter by countries or regions here. Let's pick J Japan financial data, and that's going to protect this information here. We go next, and we can select the name and description of our policy. I'll leave that as the suggested settings there. And when clicking next, it's going to go and validate the policy. We can choose to assign admin units at this stage. Uh, as I said, I have a video on admin units, which I've linked to this video, so go check that out. I'll click on next and we can choose where we want to apply the policy uh, and we have all of the different Microsoft 365 locations from Exchange Mail to SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, Teams chat and channel messages, devices, instances which relates to Microsoft Defend for Cloud apps. If you're wondering what instances is, that would have previously appeared as Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps at this point. And you can edit these and customize them as you need. So for instances, as an example, which uh, we will get to, you can select all instances, which will include all uh, Defender for Cloud Apps, or you can go specific instances uh, if you need to. So uh, if we were doing that, just as an example, I could just exclude all of these and I'll just go instances and I'll click on next and it will take us to uh, the next step, which is to review and customize the default settings from the template. You can go with just those default settings and this simple flow lets you quickly specify the sensitive info types or labels you want to protect, uh, decide whether you want the policy to detect when content is shared inside or outside the org, and set up actions like access restrictions and user and admin notifications. If you want to get more advanced at this point, create or customize advanced DLP rules, you can select this option to use a detailed rule editor to extend the options offered in the simple flow. You'll be able to refine the policy using rules that include more conditions, exceptions, and actions. I usually do this because I like more control over my uh, DLP policies and rules. When you select this option, you're going to get a low volume uh, content section and a high volume content section as well. Again, I'm going to refer you to my uh, original video linked uh, in this video for more details on, on that. So do check that out. Uh, so I'll go next here. Uh, now, this is new. This is uh, run the policy in simulation mode. Uh, turn the policy on immediately or leave the policy turned off. In simulation mode, you can show policy tips while in simulation mode. So think of this as what used to be uh, run the policy in test mode with notifications or without notifications. So policy tips is going to be... Um, 
in simulation mode is going to be the equivalent of that old test mode with notifications. And then, this is new actually, what you can do now is you can turn the policy on if it's not edited within 15 days of simulation, uh, which is quite handy. Uh, but also quite dangerous. If you're not doing diligent testing in that simulation mode, if you're not ready for that to go live, just be careful of that one, I would say. There's a note here which is telling me that at this time, simulation mode is not supported for these locations that I have selected. Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, you'll recall that I selected instances uh, for this particular DLP policy. So be wary of that. If you're doing Defender for Cloud Apps, uh, then simulation mode is not supported for you. Let's go next, and then you can review and finish. You can make any last minute changes there. Uh, it's gonna give you some suggestions here. Consider adding Teams as a location to protect the accidental sharing of sensitive info and Teams messages. So it's giving you some smart uh, recommendations there. If you're happy with all that, just go ahead and submit. I'm, I'll cancel this one because I don't want to add another one to my list just now. I did do one, a custom policy that I put there at the bottom for, um, uh, for uh, Defender for Cloud Apps, for instances, so, and you can see that there. Uh, and I put that to match uh, an Argentine uh, data source. So you, you get the idea hopefully, but um, there we go. Right, let's go back to the study guide. What have we covered? Um, we've talked about designing DLP policies based on an organization's requirements, the permissions needed to configure DLP, so the roles and role groups. We've gone through how to create and uh, manage a DLP policy. Again, do refer to that original video linked here for a deeper dive uh, into that. I, I don't want to reinvent the wheel when I have a, a good video that already describes that. As I said, this one is really to bring up to date some of the changes since that last video and interpret policy and rule precedents. We've talked about the order of uh, the policy uh, numbering. So the zero down to uh, 13, however many policies I had in place. The rules that we saw in the advanced policies as well. The rule precedence in this case. Same principle, the low volume uh, of content will be processed before the high volume of content detected within that DLP policy. Configure a Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps file policy to use DLP policies. Now, uh, you can do this what, within DLP, as we've just seen. We can use Defender for Cloud Apps as a, as a source for the DLP policy within the purview portal. But you can also create a file policy within Defender for Cloud Apps to do this from the reverse angle, if you like. And uh, this is how you do that. So you go into security.microsoft.com, the Microsoft Defender portal, and you scroll down to uh, Cloud Apps and go into Policies and Policy Management. Now, I'm already in here and I've selected to create a, I'll go back so I can show you exactly how I got to that point. I, I went to the, this part here to create a policy and there's different types of policies you can create. A file policy in this case is what we want to create and it automatically selects the category for us as DLP. So we can call this our DLP file policy, give it a more descriptive name than that, obviously, put in a good description. And then what you can do here is you can set all of these filters to match. And what this will do is it will tie back to DLP and refer to the applicable DLP policies in uh, the purview portal. So it, it, it kind of goes the other way if you if you get where I'm coming from. This one, I must admit, this one always makes less sense to me than I would like. Um, I, I, I don't really know why I would use this rather than the purview DLP policies, but it's important to know that you can do this for the context of the exam. So here you can put any filters in that you want. You can add filters for um, various uh, criteria here, as you can see, uh, by sensitivity label, for example, Microsoft Information Protection, uh, you could put in uh, there. Uh, who do you want to apply that to? All files or all files excluding selected folders or specific selected folders. Uh, select user groups, all file owners, all file owners excluding selected user groups or file owners from selected user groups. Then alerts, you can create an alert uh, matching each file. 
and here you can set uh, the default settings for that. You, you can send the alert as an email, set the daily alert limit per policy, and uh, that setting is in the DLP policies within purview as well as uh, you will see from my original video when I go into details of the advanced policy settings, or you can do um, a power um, a power um, automate as well from there. Finally, there's governance actions that you can apply uh, for OneDrive and SharePoint content. Similar options in here. You can uh, apply um, uh, send policy match digest to the file owner, notify specific users, all sorts of good stuff in here. You can uh, trash the content, you can remove a collaborator, apply or remove a sensitivity label, uh, but uh, this, is, this is essentially going to refer back to DLP because DLP being in that category, and uh, uh, but you can also apply additional governance actions there as well. So, so that's really it. That is covering all of this first section of creating and configuring DLP policies. In the next video in this series, we'll look at implementing and monitoring endpoint DLP. Very cool indeed, DLP, so powerful, so important for any organization to deploy if they're using Microsoft 365, if they're using Microsoft Purview, really, really important. Um, do check out the link to my original video on DLP, just a reminder that that one that you've just watched was a, almost like an update, a refresh to DLP. The original one I did as part of the MS-102 exam guide that I have on my channel uh, was more of a deep dive. I didn't want to repeat things and reinvent the wheel. I've just focused really on what's changed for the most part on this video. So do make sure you check out both uh, and I hope you find it useful. Let me know in the comments what you think, how you've deployed DLP, any challenges you've had with it and uh, how it integrates with Defender for Cloud apps. Uh, always interested to hear your thoughts, your comments. I appreciate your support. Again, final reminder to like, share, and subscribe. And you can also join the channel as well. Click the join button and you can see the different levels of membership that you can uh, leverage and uh, become involved in the wider growing community that we have here on Learn, Share, and Repeat. Thank you all. I'll see you soon on the next video. You all take care of yourselves. Bye for now.